for this week's clinical file, we have Debbie, and Debbie was recently admitted to the hospital with complaints of angina and a productive cough. Upon examination, the patient has crackles during late inspiration and an elevated white blood cell count. Which of the following diagnoses is the most likely present? So we have A, systolic heart failure with pulmonary edema. B, pneumonia. C, obstruction of the bronchial airways. And D is atelectasis. So we go up to the top. We see what type of question this is, right? Differential diagnosis kind of goes into that evaluation category. And we're looking more at pulmonary, right? You got to have, you got to be locked and loaded with your pulmonary knowledge to feel confident getting this one correct. All right. So let's break it down piece by piece. So we have Debbie. And she was recently admitted to the hospital with complaints of angina. We know that is chest pain. It's a medical term for chest pain and a productive cough. So I'm going to stop there. It's a really important that we understand every piece of this. It's a pretty straightforward statement, but we have a patient with chest pain. There's a bunch of different reasons why a patient could have that, right? doesn't have to be a myocardial infarction, y'all. Hold on a minute. There's a different pulmonary conditions that can cause that as well. And then a productive cough. And we usually get that if there's a lot of potential like fluid in the lungs where we're able to get that out, a lot of sputum or, or mucus, I should say, and we're able to cough that up. It creates a productive cough, right? Okay. So these are things to keep in mind because when you have a pulmonary condition that has quite a bit of, like I said, mucus or fluid buildup. A lot of times it will end up with a productive cough. So that's just something to keep in mind as we continue forward. Now in the next sentence, it says, upon examination, the patient has crackles during late inspiration and an elevated white blood cell count. A lot of information. This is juicy. All right. So we got crackles that we said during late inspiration. Let me stop there. Crackles. Also, you can see this known as rails, right? On the NPTE, they'll use those kind of interchangeably. You'll see them in the book, interchangeable as well. And we tend to see this when there is what? Come on, if you're in the car, on the treadmill, if you're listening to me live, wherever you're at right now, why do we get crackles? Why do we hear that snap, crackle, pop? I know you know what Rice Krispies are. I used to eat Rice Krispies all the time as a kid. Snap, crackle, pop, right? Well, that's the type of sound that you hear during auscultation when there's crackles that are present, more like that snap, crackle, pop action. So why do we get it though? We get it because of fluid buildup inside of the lung tissue, inside, inside of the, the spaces there, especially um, in, those, in those different tubes, like the, the bronchi, uh, the, the, the terminal bronchi, like if we have a buildup of fluid that starts to end up in those areas, you start to end up with crackles, snap, crackle, pop. So all I'm saying right now is that we have support for the fact that this patient is having some condition where there's a buildup of fluid inside of the lung tissue. That's all I'm saying. All right. And then as we continue down the question, it says elevated white blood cell count. What the heck is that? elevated white blood cell. Well, what the heck do the white blood cells do in the body, y'all? They're involved in immune system function, right? They fight bacteria, they fight viruses, they fight infection, they fight a bunch of things, right, that are very toxic to the body or help to break down the body. So white blood cells are a part of our immune system. If they're elevated, that typically means that the body's trying to fight off something, fight off infection, fight off bacteria, fight off something going on, right? So the last sentence, the question stem, it says, which of the following diagnoses is the most likely present? Look down below for those of you on the podcast. Let me go through the answer choices again. A is systolic heart failure with pulmonary edema. B is pneumonia. C is obstruction of the bronchial airways. And D is atelectasis. Let's break them down piece by piece. A, systolic heart failure with pulmonary edema. What the heck is systolic heart failure first? Okay, so this is a condition uh, also known as uh, a left ventricular heart failure where the left side of the heart is not able to contract good enough. It's weak. 
and it tends to get weak because it, it just starts to get build up with just a lot of tissue right and it's just, it's not able to contract very well and so it leads to what we call left ventricular heart failure you may also see this as a reduced ejection fraction that's what we've talked about in previous podcast episodes right so systolic heart failure, what do you need to know? The left ventricle is not pumping properly. If the left ventricle doesn't pump properly, it doesn't get blood out to the body. That's a problem, right? Okay, so now we understand what a systolic heart failure is. Does that play into what is going on in this question? Chest pain? Okay, all right. So if our left ventricle is not pumping properly, it could end up with angina or chest pain. That is true. How about productive cough? Ah, actually, yes, it can. Yeah, because the blood, it starts to back up, right? If the left ventricle is not getting the blood out, so the body, it starts to back up into the lungs and creating pulmonary edema and a productive cough. Person starts to cough up pink frothy sputum. Have you ever heard that? Pink frothy sputum? Okay. So what am I saying to you right now? I like A. Because, yeah, it could have chest pain, it could have a productive cough, especially with the pulmonary edema that it says in that answer choice. All that makes sense. Could it have crackles? Yep. Could have those too. Pulmonary edema comes with coarse crackles. So I'm like, I, right, I'm good. I like this. But there's one piece in the question. Hold on. It says an elevated and elevated white blood cell count. Does systolic heart failure with pulmonary edema, does ha it have an elevated white blood cell count? Yes or no? The, t the answer to that is not really, not necessarily. Unless there's some additional infection that's going on, I wouldn't expect to see an elevated white blood cell count in a patient with systolic heart failure and pulmonary edema. So, Although the entire question kind of made A look really nice to me, it's a pretty answer, I don't like the fact that it says white blood cell count that doesn't fit with A. I'm going to put an X next to it. Let's look at B. B says pneumonia. A lot of y'all are familiar. You didn't see your patients in acute care. It's one of the most common conditions that comes through there, right? Pneumonia, especially in the older population. Does it have chest pain? Yep. It can actually have sharp chest pain that shows up, okay? Um, does it have a productive cough? Yeah, because pneumonia is actually typically, not all the time, but it's a bacterial infection that happens inside the lungs. Guess what happens? A lot of white blood cells get in there. A lot of fluid starts building up, mucus and all that good stuff. Turns into Punta Cana in your pulmonary system, right? Bacteria just, just, just dancing all around in there. So here's the thing. Does it produce a productive cough with pneumonia? Yes or no? The answer to that is absolutely. Does pneumonia come with crackle, snap, crackle, pop? It does. Why? Because the fluid's there. Does pneumonia come with elevated white blood cell count? Absolutely. Why? Because the body is trying to fight off that potential bacterial infection that's happening in the lungs. Pneumonia is the best answer I've seen so far. I like it. I'm going to put a check mark next to it. I think every piece of the question, it fits. Doesn't mean it's the right answer. Let's continue. C, obstruction of the bronchial airways. You know, it's a really interesting answer here because it's kind of broad, right? It doesn't give me something specific like the other two answers. It's obstruction of the bronchial airways. Well, there's a lot of reasons why we could have that, right? Uh, you could think about asthma. Or you could think about... COPD potentially could have obstruction of the bronchial airways as well if it's in connection with some type of inflammatory process like chronic bronchitis associated with it. There's a lot of different reasons why we can have obstruction of the bronchial airways. Bottom line, C is really saying an obstructive pulmonary condition. And we know that there's quite a few of those. It's very general. Now, Obstruction of bronchial airways, does that cause angina? Could that cause angina? Could. How about a productive cough? Well, generally speaking, there's some obstructive conditions that don't really produce a lot of sputum. 
if for emphysema, for instance, it, it actually doesn't have a lot of mucus buildup in a lot of cases, right? And so they don't really have so much a productive cough. So there's some obstructive pathologies that do have a productive cough and some that don't. So you see why I'm already not liking C? They gave me such a general thing. It's kind of like, well, not every obstructive pathology has that. Okay, how about crackles? Is that common in obstructive pathologies? Yeah, in some and others not. How about increased white blood cells? Mm, not unless there's like really like an infection or something along the lines of that. Or maybe a, an inflammatory process that's going on. Maybe we'll see it. But do you see how I'm kind of going with this answer? It's almost annoying, right? It's getting down to where it's like, yeah, it could be kind of. I could kind of do it. And that's the reason why I don't like C. It just doesn't fit. It's kind of like, yeah, if I picked out one particular pathology in the bit in the mix, maybe it'll work out. But they didn't say that in the question. They just gave me obstruction of the bronchial airways. That by itself does not fit the clinical picture. Bottom line. I'm going to go ahead and put an X and X to that one. Let's look at D. D says atelectasis. I don't know if you've ever seen this word before. Hopefully you have because it's very common to show up. Atelectasis is a, a lobal collapse or a lobe collapse, right? We tend to get this uh, actually with patients who have, let's say, pneumonia or who are in the hospital and they're not breathing very well. They're not taking very nice deep breaths. Well, what can happen is part of your lung can collapse. We call that atelectasis. Okay. Now here's the thing. Does atelectasis have chest pain? It can, yes. Does it have a productive cough? Not really, because there's no, no real mucus buildup with that or fluid buildup, so I wouldn't expect that. So already I'm kind of like, ugh, I don't know if I like this. How about crackles? Uh, not really, unless there's fluid buildup with atelectasis or some other thing that's going on. You typically don't see crackles that much with it. How about an elevated white blood cell count? Again, I would not see that unless the patient also had an infection going on. It's not inherent to atelectasis having white blood cell count that's elevated. It just doesn't make sense. And let me nail the coffin shut right now. Atelectasis, if you did do auscultation over the area, you would actually hear pretty much next to nothing. Why? Because the air is not even moving through that lobe very well. It's collapsed. So, definitely wouldn't really hear much of the crackles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice X next to D, leaving us with our best answer of B as in boy, pneumonia. Pneumonia. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. This is not an easy one. I know some of y'all were like, oh, I got this. I got this. Well, congratulations, baby. But it ain't easy for everybody. That's for sure. Make sure you have a really good understanding of these different pathologies. Because when it comes down to the MPTE, you're going to need to know how to distinguish one versus the other. When is crackles present? When is wheezing present? Strider. When are all these things present? And with what pathologies are they present with? The, the answer choices that I gave you here tonight are very common pathologies to show up easily on your practice exam or the MPTE, so make sure you know it well. For those of you on the podcast right now, I never want to leave you with a basic explanation. I always want to take you to the next step. First of all, I want to say I'm proud of you. Second of all, I want to let you know that there is a cheat sheet to help you understand a bit more about pneumonia, the profile of it, which you can expect to see, auscultation, all that good stuff. That is in the cheat sheet. If you go into the show notes, click the link in there. You can get it.